Thursday on FT Live, Vegas trip is over with grinders. Braun, Frazier, Krasinski, and Whit Merrifield right off the top here. Leader of the Pro Athlete Golf Tour. AJ, what's going on, dude? You want to intro Whit now that you finally get to be your dream uh, job, a golf <laughs> analyst? Yes, finally, we're not talking baseball. Uh, the man, the myth, the legend, the guy in charge here. Whit Merrifield, a great setup here at the Ritz-Carlton uh, in Orlando. Uh, I walked in and I see signs everywhere. For, for his tournament and i actually saw him when i got here about an hour ago he was grinding on the putting green man so he's what's in it to win it i don't know if he can beat like smoltz and punto and kyle loesch and some of those guys but the host is here and he's going to talk about his golf tournament what's yeah up, yeah uh it's been a good been a really good two days uh a lot of guys got in yesterday had a practice round um we were just talking on the range uh we're the first group off and we go off in uh, about 30 30 45 minutes and um most of these guys have been out here already for 30, 45, an hour, hitting balls. And we we're saying, you know, if this thing continues to grow like we think, they're going to have to invest in some new range balls because baseball players, they love to hit balls in the range. And guys have been out here for a long time. So uh, excited about the weather we got. Uh, the Ritz has been amazing. Um, the course is in great shape. We got some grandstands up for the PNC, and uh, it'll be a fun, fun couple of days. Can you give us the lowdown of who the favorites are and who was maybe talking shit yesterday at the at the opening <laughs> uh, event? <laughs> well, side side action is encouraged, and um, <laughs> so I've got some side action with a lot of a lot of my former teammates, uh, mainly Jordan Romano, Ernie Clement. Um, that's 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 been the main majority of the shit talking. I'm still kind of getting to know these other guys on a good enough level to where we can talk shit, but. Um, you know, Smolty is, uh, he, he's going to the final round of, of champions Q school next week. So I'm sure his game is, is in great shape. I'm playing with him this morning. So excited to see, see where his game's at. Um, I think we've got like eight or nine plus handicaps in the field between Smoltz, Clippard, uh, Kyle Loesch, Gagne, uh, Will Myers is, is a plus, um, Nick Punto, Russ Ortiz. Like we got some really good golfers here. So uh, excited to to see what these guys can do on this course and see what kind of numbers get put up. Uh, my, my question to you is, while they're golfing here, like, is there noise allowed? Are you allowed to talk smack while they're in their swing? Or is this, like, professional? Like, <laughs> hey, man, just let them, you know, let's be professional here. Yeah, I mean, you know, we got some money at stake. So um, it's a little more than just, like, a little friendly wager. Uh, so, you know, I um, I wouldn't recommend that. You know, I, okay. I try to keep uh -huh. it friendly. I tell you what, you, you're playing with Smoltz today, right? Yeah. I tell you what, in the middle of his backswing, you say something, see what happens. Exactly. See yeah. if he doesn't throw a club or something. At <laughs> yeah. <him>. He's <laughs> gonna say, "Shut the fuck up." <clears throat> We're playing for real money here. <laughs> Just make yeah. sure you have your phone on if you do that too. <laughs> yeah, filming it. Yeah. You hey, might need to oh, show that to the cops. <laughs> all of a sudden, a co uh, club comes flying at poor Wit's head from from Smoltz's. <laughs> but you guys got a great setup. The, week, the weather here this weekend is supposed to be unbelievable. Uh, you got, you, like you said, that they're setting up the grandstands for the PNC. Father son, which is in two weeks here, where like Tiger and all the golfers with with kids now come in here and play, mm -hmm. and, and it's a great tournament for families. And then the course is in perfect shape because they're setting it up for that. So that you, you know, it's funny. We were, I was talking to Scott, the, the head pro here. Mm -hmm. He's like, it's a bad time because we're putting in mulch, and he's like, but the, we got to get it ready, for, you know, for two weeks. And everyone's like, you know, I was talking to Jason Romano. He's like, oh, this is perfect. Are you kidding me? The yeah. course is what we care about. Nobody cares about you guys putting in mulch. But <laughs> the course is in tip top shape right now. It's in great shape. It's playing. It's playing good. It's playing hard, and uh, it's uh, it'll be like I said. It'll be it'll be a fun couple of days. We had a great, great night last night. A welcome party. Um, some great, really, really amazing uh, sponsors that have really done a great job uh, helping us get this thing off the ground. Uh, we had Alpha Omega here last night. It's a a great winery out in Napa uh, doing a wine tasting. Uh, great tea gifts with everything from. Uh, Taylor made balls to stitch uh, these these really cool stitch bags. We had Johnny O sponsoring us. We got uh, speakers, coolers, sunglasses, hats. Um, we got Bettinardi 
uh, donating some putters and customized putters. Um, just uh, really, uh, really appreciate some of the, the help that we got from from our sponsors to help get this thing off the ground. And um, I think it'll it'll really take off and look forward to a, a fuller, a, a, a more full field next year. So that I think we got a seventy two thousand dollar purse this year and we're thinking with a full field and uh you know some help from sponsors we can get that up to around a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar purse and make these five footers that guys are gonna have to play a little more uh, a little more <laughs> nerve-wracking <laughs> yeah then a aj would definitely be in for sure man yeah that he's waiting for the pot to grow for sure <laughs> no, here's what i'm waiting for not to be in vegas the three days before that's what i'm, <laughs> that's what I'm waiting for Hey, hey, wait, let me ask you this, man. What's more nerve wracking? Being in the front of a tee in front of your peers trying to lead off in your first ever, you know, chair or tournament here in front of all, you know, these baseball players or, you know, three, two count bases loaded. You're trying to win a game. Tell you what, man, it's it's uh, doing this in, in front of people is is out of our comfort zone and uh, it is nerve wracking. We we're just talking, talking with uh, with Smoltz last night and how he was he was about to qualify his second uh, for the, get to get past the second round of Q school to qualify for the final round. And he was saying that last stretch, just how you couldn't believe how nervous he was. And um, you wouldn't think that uh, us as athletes that, that, you know, play in front of 40, 50,000 uh, in, in a big stadium and, and millions more watching at home would get uber nervous over hitting a golf ball in front of five, six people. But um we're, 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 we're so uber competitive that we want to do well and especially in front of our peers and which is why I think this this tournament is such a such a cool deal because we're all competitors at heart it's, it's cool to go out and and we get to play in these charity events and these pro ams which are which are fun and, and, and super beneficial but we don't ever really get to compete outside of our uh, outside of our sport and at, at a high level and uh, that's what we're hoping this is is the chance for us to come out and and uh, have some high stakes in, at this golf tournament and, and really get the competitive juices going. Praise, I'll tell you this. Listen, I'll tell Witness, too. I play in a lot of these. First tee every time you're nervous. I don't mm -hmm. care I don't care how many times you do it. The first tee, and even if there's one person watching or 500 people watching, you get you put the ball down on the first tee, your hand is shaking. I'm already nervous. And you're just going, don't top it. God, <laughs> yeah. Just don't top it, right? And then the, big, then the next thing, Todd, you ask that question, is you get the first, like, this far, mm -hmm. two-foot putt, right? And you're like, ah, oh, I can make this 100 out of 100 times. Because you don't putt them and everyone's like, oh, that's good. You're standing over that first putt and your hands are like. That club, the club uh, head the goes club like this. And the club gets real wobbly going back. Because, you know, normally you're like, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. No Boom, doubt. just easy stroke. All of a sudden you're like, man, there's a little money on the line. Your hands are going. And the club head's going. Uh, no uh, doubt. So, yeah, that, that to me, it's not the first tee as much as the first, like, tester putt, two to three footer. Because, again, everyone's like, ah, oh, you're playing with your buddies. Yeah, pick it up. Yeah, par. And oh shit, I gotta make that. That's why, that's why I was out here at eight thirty practicing those, <laughs> trying to get some sort of muscle memory going. Might be one of those things like a show and go. The next time you play, screw it. I'm not practicing. I'm coming up. Let's go. My mind's already set on my first swing. You know. I hear you. Crazy. Hey, wait. Last one from me, and I know you got to run around there. Um, how did this come about? Because you told us about what you you know project going forward, like what next year could look like. But did you look around and go, hey, it'd be cool to gather a bunch of big leaguers because golf is talked about by many dudes more than anything else, you know, before the season, during the season, right? Getting everyone together and also making it competitive, which has been important. Yeah, it came about, we were actually, I was at uh, Brady Singer's bachelor party and um, his agent is with Excel. And we were, we were just talking, shooting shit and Brady was over there doing whatever Brady was doing in his own world. And we were talking about how much we like, we just got done playing, playing golf. And we we're talking about how much we like golf. And um, uh, we were going to the, that night match that Tiger and Rory and uh, uh, JT and Spieth did in uh, Florida. We were about to go to that. And we were talking about, you know, it's, what if we, what if we did something not necessarily along the lines of that, but uh, along the lines of getting, players together and and competing because there's really nothing like that that we can do and started talking about it uh jason's a member here at the at the ritz and the ritz has been just incredible uh with with helping us put this together and, and being accommodating and um got it going and uh, sent out as many invites as we could um and you know we're, we're looking for a, a 48 person field this year and ended up getting 27 so 
Uh, I think a part of that, a lot of that was from guys being unsure about the event. Um, a lot of people are at weddings and bachelor parties. This is a big time for that, for baseball players. So uh, a lot of it was that. A lot of it was we didn't know who all plays golf. Uh, we've got, I've gotten at least four calls yesterday from guys that want to play the next year that I didn't know play golf. So um, there's some uncertainty with that as well. So I think as this thing grows and word spreads, the, the field will get even bigger and we're going to have to start finding ways to accommodate uh, bigger fields and maybe have qualifiers and stuff like that. So it's a, uh, it's a super fun couple of days. You guys have already, we're having a great time and it's cool to get to interact with guys you wouldn't normally get to interact with. You know, I sat down and had a long conversation with, with uh, Steve Tolleson, a uh, long time big leaguer, get ex Gamecock that I haven't really ever got a chance to talk to. And so it's, it's cool to, do stuff like that. I had dinner with Eric Gagne, who I'd never, you know, never thought I'd have dinner with Eric Gagne. And sure enough, I'm here having dinner with him. So it's a good way for, to get guys together and compete in the sport that we all enjoy. Are you, uh, Brady Singer's not here? No, he said he wasn't good enough to play. I said, dude, it was a handicap. <laughs> what happened to the bet? The bet where he's supposed to wear? Dude, he, wait, wait, you're supposed to wear the Gator jersey on the first hole, aren't you? <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll have to get I'll have to, uh, I'll do something back. I can have one here for you. Okay. <clears throat> Tomorrow. If you get one here, I'll, I'll say Przinsky on the Hold up, hold up, AJ. Wait. I forgot about that. Why'd you have to bring that up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you keep doing there you the, go. I can, can I bring this over with you want <laughs> for the 18? <laughs> for that two foot putt on 18? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can bring a full uniform over for him if he wants. He can wear a full baseball, football, basketball, whatever he wants. Hey, last wet last thing for me is 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 wifey at home gonna be happy right now after this tournament with the side betting going on when you come home. There's gonna be a smile on her face when you come home right now or no? Oh no doubt, no doubt. We're okay, actually all going, right. That's uh, all I got. That's all I'm yeah. making sure. All right, We're good. flying from here to Nashville uh, to go to the winter meetings on Sunday and um, I'll be sure to that first dinner, I'll be sure to send, ah, uh, send Romy a picture and say thanks for <laughs> I love it. Oh, hey, man. by the way, uh, congratulations. Oh, thank you. You're a White Sox, I heard. Everyone, everyone oh, keeps telling know, me. I didn't know about that. Everyone keeps telling me. Whit Maryville is going to be a White Sox, so congratulations. <laughs> let, me, let me know what you need in Chicago. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have you, uh -oh. No, but on a serious, I know we're talking golf here, but have you heard anything? Like, I mean, you don't have to divulge all. Um. Know. It's you know it's 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 uh, gone kind of how we thought it would go okay. to this point. So um, good answer, good answer. What? Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which going to be at spring training with a big league club? Okay, book yeah, it. We know that we're going to be in uh, exactly. Glendale, but the dog <laughs> holding that tournament with trophy the up. Hold hey, that spring training one way or another, whether I'm signed and, and getting ready for the season, or whether I'm there recruiting guys for this tournament next year. Waiting, <laughs> I'll, be there. I'll be in spring training next year. Also, I will say this: wait, like it's good to be loved, like. The fact that there's a fan base that that's calling for you, even if it doesn't end up being the fan base because they don't pay enough, but still good to be loved. Right? <laughs> wait, wait, you're going to be on second base after you hit a double, guys. But yo, dog, forget about the game. What? Tell me about this golf tournament. Now that, that's <laughs> that's what you're hoping for, and I'm promise you, after this whole thing goes down, you it you might have like a two tournaments coming up with all the people that are going to want to be in this thing. We'll see. We hope so. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh... You might have an umpire be, call you safe just so he can get in the tournament. You never know. <laughs> well, you'd have to really call me safe. If we're gonna get <laughs> hey, but proof of concept, first year, that's the thing. Like, people want to see it. They want to hear about it. And then um, that's how it gets rolling. So, wait, good luck, dude. Good luck. Good luck, luck on the course, but also with running this whole thing. Obviously, thanks for letting us be a little part of it. Um, and let us know anything we can do to help, obviously. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Whit Merrifield with us um, as we'll continue some interviews from the pro athlete golf tour uh, as they're switching up there. Braun and Frazier here. So, Godfather, while we have a moment, let's charge the damn mound because we charge do have it. news to get to. Okay. And some of the news that's breaking over the past 24 hours is perfect for you. It's like perfect timing to have you on. They, okay. They knew I was coming on today. That's right. We, we have, I mean, basically the, the, Two things we're going to start with are Yankees Mets related and Reds related. Yeah. So let's start with the Yankees to the Mets for Luis Severino. Sevi is just trying to experience the Todd Father world of playing <laughs> for both sides, right? And yeah. he was coming off, he'll be the first to tell you, he was super straight up the entire time, a brutal really? year. He had an ERA that was well over six. The Mets give him one year. 
13 million dollars and if you're a super casual fan you're like huh one year 13 million bucks for my Mets for a dude that did not pitch well but you got to look at peripherals you got to look at the past yeah. um so what do you think about the signing because you got to watch him a lot yeah I I think it's a I think it's a good signing I think it's very good you never know listen at the end of the day it's still New York okay and people got to understand that he's playing in some of uh, some of the biggest crowds, the most electric crowds, and crowds that are not very forgiving. So he's still going to be in the spotlight. He's going to get blown up even more if you want the truth. But I think one word to describe last year's performance was confusing. I, I think for me, you watch the guy pitch like, man, he's got good stuff and he's getting whacked. Was he tipping pitches? Um, you know, was his stuff flat? It looked like his fastball was flat. But his slider at times worked really well. So if you don't have that secondary pitch, which – which he kind of didn't seem to have at the end there. Bad things are going to happen, but I do. I did think. I do think he needed a change, maybe, maybe a smaller market. But at the same time, this is awesome for him. One year, thirteen million. He's going to the Mets. All of a sudden, Cohen can look like a hero here, just like the Braves do, picking up these pitchers. Um, you know, like Ronaldo Lopez. All of a sudden, if he becomes that starter, they want him to be. This is a huge off season for Luis. And he needs to figure out some things before he moves on because this is this is the biggest year of his career. If he doesn't bring back what he has from years ago when I played with him, this could be this could be the final straw for him. Yeah, and he's young though. Yeah. He's 29 years old. I mean, and he's had success in the past. I mean, this is a guy stuff wise who was a one or a two at, yeah. at, at one point, and he's not 35 years old, you know? So he did get shut down in mid-September too with the oblique strain which you know that's less troublesome than elbow shoulder etc but you try and look for signs like at the end of the season actually it was kind of his, his worst pitching 35 innings 29 runs to end the season but still for me I think it's a, a great upside signing for a team that does not have to worry too much about budget it's a guy that could no. really perform for them and turn things around we've seen this happen with guys too he's going to drive line. He went to drive line. You know, that's yeah. the big spot that a lot of pitchers go to and become a different beast the next year. So he's working on making a change. I know you said he's not switching markets. He spent eight years with the Yanks. I don't know. I feel like he can handle New York. I feel like he's proved that. I think it was actually like it's mechanics, it's health. For me, he goes to a bigger ballpark. I think that helps. You know, it's much harder. You tell me. Much harder to hit a home run in Queens than it is in the Bronx, No. I'm I'm not certain on that one to be honest no? with you. I uh, no, I I I would have to disagree with you on that. I mean, left center is like almost 400 at Yankee Stadium, and I think it's like 378 if I'm not mistaken for the Mets. I mean, listen, it doesn't matter what the ballpark is. If you're throwing if you're throwing well and you're throwing the Severino, I know he's going to hold guys within any ballpark. So I'm not really worried about how big it is. I'm not worried about if he gives up home runs. I'm worried about if he's getting W's for the team. And he's getting through the first couple innings. You know, he wasn't getting through three innings in games. So that's the biggest thing. I'm glad he's going to get help. And now I wish him all the best because guess what? He's got another beast ahead of him. Mets are going to be a good team. You got to try and beat those Braves. But at the same time, this is his biggest year of his career. Put everything behind. This is his biggest year. I hope he goes out there and dominates. Yeah, and if he does, he gets paid. You know, that's what you do. This is a one year what they call like a pillow contract. OK, because yeah. if we looked years back at Severino, when he was firing on all cylinders, you were mm -hmm. like, this could be a hundred, hundred fifty plus yeah. million dollar dude. Right. If if he was the guy that we saw from years back, he would have been in that conversation when we're like, oh, where's Jordan Montgomery going? Right. And then where's Blake Snell? And then where's Luis Severino? Yeah. So he's 29. It and, th and this is and this is like a, a prime example. Like if and I don't know if he did or not, if he if he if he they came to him, the Yankees said, listen, we want to sign you three years ago to a long term deal. Guys like, oh, man, you know, wait it out. You'll make, you know, 50, 75 more million. Sometimes you if in your mind, like, listen, I might I might should have taken that deal. Those are things you got to think about your livelihood, too. And people are always like, oh, you should have you would have made more. Well, listen, this whatever price it could have been, he, you know, sometimes people should have taken it. And we'll talk about a guy who took a deal. Just a little bit ago, too, as we get forward here. And and last thing, and then we got our next guest coming up for the Mets. They have a lot of work to do with their pitching staff in general. Yeah. That yeah. was clear-cut 
from top to bottom in the front office that they need to rebuild the starting staff. Now they add another starter here, right? Um, yeah. Obviously, they had Scherzer and Verlander with the big boys at the top of the rotation. Even the year before that, DeGrom's gone. Like, it's a very different-looking rotation. Senga was a great signing. He was fantastic this year. But they, they're going to do more, okay? Yeah. This is not it. They're, remember, I remember think they're when, very when, in on Yamamoto. What? Remember when Cohen said, oh, man, we're not worried about next year, right? Now this, I, when we, I said it from the get-go. I said, he's going to say that, but watch out for the offseason. So, I mean, listen. You can only Dude. keep a guy down for a little bit until he gets a little more excited. Next thing you know, you get that itch again. Book this. The, and we talked about this the other day. The Mets are going to win more games this coming season than they did last season. I'm oof, telling you. Oof. All okay. right. All right. So, all right. Book it, baby. I mean, they had a bad year. All right. Are we ready to go with our next guest? Krasinski with oh, John Smoltz oh, in the no house. No big deal. The, wow. Just a Hall of Famer. You know, favorites. guy calls the World Series. What are you, wow. sitting in a booster seat? No, I dude, you're little. <laughs> it's depth perception. You we're know, never John, together, like, though. We're, you're always, you know, you're always doing the A game. I'm doing the B game. So we're never sitting next to each other. So you forget. Wait, John knows this. This is a TV trick, John. You know this, right? We've worked with people that maybe are, are shorter. And all yeah. of a sudden, if you're if you're in a TV studio, they will stand a few steps ahead of you, and then people look at them on TV, and they're like, "Oh, they're the same height." And you're like, "No, that dude's six four, and that dude's uh, five ten. <laughs> Trick of TV. There's, it didn't exactly. make me look like I got hair, but it's, there's a lot of tricks that can be done. Oh Jesus! So, what do you think of this thing, John? Obviously, you're in tournaments all the time. And when did you find out about it? And what's it looking like? Because I think you're going to be able to say a few years from now, "Oh, I went to the first one," because I think it's going to be big. Yeah, you know, I found out in the off season, and um, certainly Orlando's not that far from Atlanta. And I, I will use any excuse there is to play golf. <laughs> and I, for the record, I have the greatest wife in the world because I will now have been in three straight golf tournaments this week, next week, and the following week will be three straight golf tournaments. And I couldn't do that without the, her blessing. So uh, I'm look. This is a lot of fun. And anytime we can compete. AJ and I have competed in other tournaments. It's it's it doesn't replace what we did for a living, but it's sure sure. Well, we don't. Fun. I wouldn't say we compete because you're always at the top of the leaderboard, <laughs> and I'm like kind of in the middle ish. Like you're trying to win, I'm trying to get like top twenty. So we don't really compete on the same level. It's different. Well, we but start off. We start off even, we and then then even. you go up and I go down. It's fine. But the, I mean, humble brag yourself right now. I mean, t tell. I mean, this guy right here, he qualified. For final round of Champion Store, which is the senior PGA against all these guys that you've heard of. So, I mean, yeah, it's, humble brag yourself right now, John. Well, I, I mean, honestly, I was just trying to see how far I could take my golf game once I had uh, two new hips, which two new hips. I'm, I haven't named them yet, but I'm thinking about. <laughs> One of them's got to be Ole for golf. <laughs> right. Your caddy has carried your I mean, I, I was tired of walking around like an old man. I feel 20 years younger, and I'm just trying to compete. And certainly that's a, a fun thing. Um you know, now I got to, now I really got to shoot birdies. I got to go way low. So, um, no, it's fun. And, and, and I just want to see how far I can take the game. All right. So who's out there? What's the competition look like? Did you go to the event last night or did you get in this morning? No, I went to the event last night. There's, you know, I, I, I'm trying my best to play the old man role here. Cause I'm the <laughs> oldest guy here and there's some young guys that hit it 30, 40 yards by me, but that's okay. You know, I'll be the first on the green, hopefully the first in the hole. Uh, but no, you know, guys like Kyle Loesch, Clippard, Punto. I mean, the, there's nine guys, at least nine, that are plus handicaps. So baseball is well represented, and this thing's going to grow. I know it's going to grow and continue to get bigger. And, um, you know, again, if they're keeping score and there's a leaderboard, my motto is I want to be on it. And at the end of the day, I'd like to win it, but I still want to be on it. Hey, is there anybody right now that you're playing with that you're like, wow, I didn't know he was that good at golf? Has there been some guys that you're like, dude, I'm pretty impressed with some of these, these baseball players? Yeah, you know, some of the current guys that I would never get a chance to play with is going to be interesting to see how they navigate, you know, their offseason and play golf. Uh, Whit Merrifield, of course, put this event on, so I'm playing with him. be interesting to see, you know, position players – we just don't think position players compete with pitchers, you know, but that's just. Well, just one's an athlete, one's not. We're gonna, we know which. One has time and the other doesn't. Yeah. So. One, one special, one's a kicker and one's an actual player. So. Yeah, so there's a lot of pitchers here represented and a few position players. Okay. Um, do you get an opportunity here to meet some guys that obviously you're going to be able to talk about throughout the season? And I know, I mean, even Witt said, like, 
they wanted a, a bigger turnout. I mean, he's very transparent about it. But a lot of the guys either A, find out about it a little too late. B, they don't know that they're golfers, right? Yeah. It's not like there's some like master list from the union that says, here are all the golfers that you should reach out to. Like he's finding out just through word of mouth. And then the guys get to actually see, oh, this is like, this is real. This is legit. This is set up nicely. Yeah, for sure. Um, look, I'm, I'm always enamored with young pitching and like just going up to Mackenzie Gore and asking how he's feeling, you know, probably the most innings he's ever thrown. Uh, getting to talk to some of the younger guys has always been fun when we get to do what we do. And, you know, our paths don't cross. We're in, you know, we might as well have been in the stone ages. I get it. The game's different, but I still have passion for keeping guys healthy and, and just talking them through it and seeing what they're, what they're thinking about when it comes to training and, and trying to get to that next level. We all did it when we were playing. We wanted to play as long as we could. We got a chance to do that. And um, I just encourage young guys when I get to meet them, you know, from the booth, everything's different. We know that. But when you get to talk to them and they get to ask questions, that's a lot of fun. Let me ask you this along those lines about training and stuff. You see, I want to jump in a little baseball talk. You see basically pitchers, they're not, they're not getting to that seventh inning anymore. I mean, can you attest that and explain why that's going on? Is it a minor league thing? Are they not trying to extend them anymore? Because it just seems like every time they get to that fifth inning, they're trying to bring somebody else in. To me, it's just an analytical model, and it's a byproduct of what they're asking players to do. It's really not players' fault. Um, the byproduct of just getting in and out of trouble, they don't do it. So when they get in trouble, they expect to be taken out. The training for hard throwing and max effort and spin is definitely taken over. It's not a good product long term. We all know that. But there's so many arms and factories that are being developed that I think – analytically and financially they feel like this is pieces to the puzzle they can keep placing and replacing i would hate it um i would i tell people all the time when they put a uniform on you play as long as you it's your career it's not theirs and play as long as you can and that's not the that's not the idea anymore so uh the elite will rise up and over the, the, the elite always will will find a way to to navigate and adjust but it's the middle to guys that haven't developed and they don't i call it de-developing greatness because there's a lot of great players there's more young players that in our game today that could impact in a way that never before but they won't be given the chance to play 10 to 15 years so you know they're getting paid really well um but the, as you guys know to play this game is an honor and a privilege and to play it as long as you can gosh that's uh, that was just a treat for for us and our generation John, did you see uh, Scherzer's comments? He was on our show the other day, and he said that, you know, obviously he's he's not anti-pitch clock. He just wants more input from the pitchers when they're deciding what to do, and they might tweak the rules again, right, take a couple seconds off of the clock. But his big thing was he said he spoke to doctors. He, he even said the names, right, Meester, and uh, who was the other one? Was it Elitrash or one of the other big doctors that he spoke to? Um, and he said that they felt like – or not they felt like they saw more severe – um, elbow slash arm injuries this year. So even though the numbers were maybe a little bit similar in terms of who was going on, it's like they were out longer and the injuries were more severe. And obviously it's hard to just completely pin that on something. But Max thinks because of this conversation all tumbling down where it's like max effort and guys are taking more huffs and puffs between pitches. If they're not doing that now and they have to reverse, it could lead to an injury. Yeah, you know, if there were a ton of pitch, I love Max. I think he's brilliant, smart, um, played a long time. If there was a bunch of pitchers in his age group, I'd say that's really relevant. But I don't think it's relevant to the point that we just talked about earlier. The way they're training and the way they're throwing, there's no chance guys are going to stay healthy throwing 99 to 100 miles an hour and 94 mile an hour sliders. It's just not physically possible. And so whether you're pitching every five seconds or every five minutes, the, the theory is the same. Now, the recovery and the training will have to change and people will adjust this year because the game was played at this speed without a pitch clock forever. And it just got slowed down. It got bogged down with information. And I get it. I mean, when you're older and you got to adjust on the fly, that's difficult. But the percentage of pitchers that we're talking about and the amount of injuries that are happening, I knew this was going to be a topic because it was going to be an easy, um, you know, when we're not looking at injuries as a whole, which we're not then I don't understand, you know, it doesn't matter what you put in there, that we're not interested in preventing injuries. We're just interested as an organization of baseball to just keep plug in place. So until teams look at the injury prevention part, then all of this is just going to keep happening no matter what, in my opinion, you ask pitchers to do. If you ask pitchers to throw, like I'll give you a perfect example. 
if we're we're more closer to a six man rotation than we are going backwards and yeah. throwing. If you give guys five days rest who throw a hundred, what are they going to do on their their extra day of rest? You think they're going to throttle it back? No, they're going to throw harder because they know they have extra time to rest. So it just repeats the same thing that I've been saying over and over again. The body's not meant to do that. If you've got a hundred in your arsenal, I don't understand why you wouldn't want to save some of those velocity late and just cruise like a mat you know justin verlander's been the model for so long and yes he got hurt but he's pitched long time pitch in postseason jacob de grom is going to be the topic of, of how do we have the most dominant pitcher in the history of our state Uh, we lost him for a second. We were on. on oh, he was cruising there. too. Man, man. Oh, I wanted to hear that one. The connection was hot there too. We'll get him right back. We'll get John right back. But I, I think he makes. I'm, honestly, I think he makes a great point. Like I, I've never thought of it like that. Like if you're throwing 99, 100, 102, listen, your body's not prepared to do that. Like I think a so, listen. I think a softball players, the windmill, how they throw 150 to 200 pitches a game. Yeah, this is the, the arm can go this way. It, it's it's this way mechanically that it's really not supposed to do that. And listen, I can sit here and do underhand tosses. I do classes and and you know lessons with softball players. I love doing it because my shoulder and arm feel great. These guys are throwing so hard, and their off speed pitches, their secondary pitches, are just as hard as like a two seam fastball. So it's like it's it's pretty unbelievable to see and watch but it's just not good for their bodies and i think i think he makes a great point there and i would i wanted to hear what he said about the grom too as well but yes it was uh he was spot on right there with all that scott yeah and you're right i mean i think he's talking about the fact that you've got a guy that's one of the most dominant pitchers ever ever he's just not on the field enough for anyone to be able to enjoy you know to enjoy him pitch and I got to play behind him and I'm sitting there at third I'm like maybe I could just take a pitch off and just watch you know how spectacular this guy is I would think about that during the game how cool it is and how much length his length after he was done finishing it was like 60.6 inches is the mound it, he turned it into like 52 so it's like I mean even less than that 45 so it's uh it's kind of comical to watch in a, in a good way and it's something that I want to keep watching for the next four or five years yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. All right, um, let, let's get back to some news while we have a sec, all right? We're going to recharge the mound and get to another signing that popped up. And I'm going to couple these together, okay? Because we mentioned this one briefly because it happened, I think, right before our show started yesterday. Now we've got two signings for former Todd Father team Cincinnati Reds. 33-year-old Nick Martinez signs up to a contract with them. And Nick actually was on a deal with the Padres where he was able to opt out, which I'm sure his agency was well aware that it was going to be lucrative for him. So um, two years, $32 million with uh, club option two um, was, was what he was on, I guess. Sorry, I'm yep. messing this up. So so he was on one. There was like a player option attached to it. Yep. And he yep. had the chance with the Padres to to ditch that and opt out of it. So now he's on a fresh contract with the Reds for two years, $26 million. It has an opt-out after the first year. So he's 33 years old. He opted out, Todd Father, of the last two years, 16 mil. So he went from two years, 16 mil left. His agency said, screw that. We're going to get more. <laughs> and he goes into the market and gets $10 million more million over those same two years. For 26 million. I'll add this one for you too, because it's pretty similar pricing. Um, Emilio Pagan actually got that two year $16 million with Cincinnati. So they just added two pitchers here. Pagan's definitely a reliever coming off a good year yep. with the Minnesota Twins at a just a, just a tick under a three ERA. Um, and then there's an opt out for him actually too. So Pagan could do just one year and then uh, hit free agency again. And then Nick Martinez, I would imagine, is going to go to spring training as a starter because he can do both. I mean, he was more of a reliever last year for the Padres, but he can start. But the, at, but the Reds need some starting pitching too, so you can always transition him to the bullpen. Sure. What do you think of Cincinnati starting to starting to do a little bit of this? Because Vado's deal is off, right? The books now? Do you know yeah. that these two dudes are by far the highest two 
uh, paid reds right now on the books. And it's not like they're making a ton of money. We're talking about wow. guys that are making what 13 mil a year and a guy that's making eight mil a year. Eight, yeah. Then after that, I think you go to like Hunter green at three mil a year. Uh, these guys are all <laughs> on league minimum deals because they're rookies. It's it's rookie city in Cincinnati. And they still got more room to spend and they better. And I, I think the time has come now, you know, no more talking. You know, they've been getting their nickel dimers here. I like to call them, you know, this guy, this guy here, you know, nothing that's going to blow your mind. I think this is a great start. I play with Nick Mar- Martinez uh, in the, the Olympics. He was our number one pitcher. He was, a, you know, he, he revamped his career in Japan, learned how to throw a split change like they do in Japan. It's a filthy pitch. Two years ago in the playoffs, he dominated. He was one of their better relievers that would come in early. Um, he had an okay year last year, but I think another, another person changed the scenery smaller market they love you there you you know you do well they love you there in cincinnati i know i know firsthand and i I think this would be great for him he's going to a team that wants to win now they play together they have a young core that is ready and willing to go out there and do whatever it takes to win and i think putting nick out there being you know one of their top starters i think that can only help him yeah and keep going you're right you got to keep going. Are yeah. they going to be? Are they going to be at the top of the market for starters? No, they're not. They're not in a conversation with Yamamoto. They're not even in. You know, they're not in a conversation for Jordan Montgomery, who obviously would be an awesome fit there and, and set yeah. a tone there. But same thing. I mean, Monty's going to get at least like one fifty ish at least at this point. They're yeah. not playing at that. They're not playing ball like that. But there are plenty of other starters. Like even the other day, I mean, we were with Lucas Giolito. He's a free agent. And they could use some more starting pitching with some upside, change of scenery for him too. Um, I know he gave up a lot of home runs this past year, so Cincinnati might not be the ballpark <laughs> that he's looking yeah. at. But just just looking at that next tier, I mean, why not have a conversation with Marcus Stroman, yep. James Paxton, Severino maybe would have been a fit there, but guys like that, Michael Waka, Seth Lugo, you know, there's there's dudes that they should be talking to here. Um, to add to that pitching staff because they need more depth. They ran out of steam at yeah, the end they, of last they have, season. They have some young pitchers ready to go. They just a couple of them got injured, and you know Hunter Green with the with the injury, the top top doggy there. Mm-hmm. Um, they Lodolo, have some, Dolo. They have some left. Yeah, the lefties that can throw. Man, Abbott. I mean, they got guys that are ready and itching. They see it. They see the door. They're like, man, I want to get in there. I just got to stay healthy. They do have the guys that can pitch. They need the guys to hit. And I think they got those guys coming too as well. It's just a matter of putting everything together. You score eight runs, but you give up 10. That can't happen. Nope. So that's the biggest thing. And I think right now is good. And and Pagan, good reliever. He's been doing it for a long time. He's going to give you what he gives you. He's going to be healthy. He's going to go out there in whatever inning you want him to get in. So these are selfless guys that are going to go out there and try and win. Because guess what? Most of these guys that are signed aren't getting any younger either. So they're, they're, they're ready. They're itching to win too. And Pagan made a great adjustment because he had home run issues too for, yeah. I think it was several years. And then last year barely gave up any. I think he gave up five over like 70 innings. So yeah, he he's added to a bullpen that's got talent. There's stuff. I mean, Alexis Diaz at the back end is Oof. is elite now. Um, Sims, Jabot, uh, TJ Antone, if you can stay healthy. Yep. So okay. yeah, they need, they need depth. They need pitching depth. So it's a good start for them to, to spend some dough. And for the National League Central to really be involved, you got the Cardinals picking up three starters. Obviously, the Cubs picked up Craig Council, and they're going to do more. We'll get to the Brewers in a moment with Jackson Churio. But the other side of this for me is now you have the Twins saying they're cutting payroll, and Pagan is gone. Kenta Maeda is gone. He's already signed with the Tigers. Sonny Gray is gone. And I know they're looking at someone like Chris Paddock, who's back and looked pretty good at the end of last season, that they can put him into the rotation. But same thing with Aaron Gleeman, who's been on this show before, and he writes for The Athletic. He said the twin staff, the whole pitching staff, is projected to make under $25 million. Pablo Lopez, they said, is the only guy that's above $3 million uh, as part of their pitching staff. He, he's at eight. So Maeda signed for two years. It was 24 yeah, you think, you think like that. Like how did the how did the Tigers get a guy like that, you know, to come oh we're, we're come over and, and be that guy that wants to play for him? Like, why can't the Reds do that? Like, did they not ask? You know what I mean? Like, we don't know the underlying factors, but you see some of these pickups and you're like, huh. Interesting. Like, 
if that was the number, like, why can't some of these other teams, like, you know, throw in a few extra bucks or something like that? I, I always, I'm always curious about that. Like, what made him go there? Well, maybe that's the only team that really came to him, and he was itching to find a team and not worry about it in the offseason. So it's like that would have been a good pickup for the Reds too. So it's like, you know, some of the signings, it's like these Braves sneak away with these guys. You know, it, it's pretty interesting to see how all this goes down. Yeah. I'm with you. All right, so now let's get to the National League Central um, again with the Brewers and the continuous updates on Jackson Churio. So it's looking more and more like he's going to be by far the highest paid player to never crack the big leagues yet to get <laughs> a contract like this. We went over it quite a bit yesterday, but we'll get your take on this and we'll give you the updates. So Ken was the first one to break that this was going down. That was a couple days ago. Uh, John Heyman said, and he's 19, the Brewers are expected to complete today the richest contract ever for a player who has yet to reach the bigs. The deal is expected to be eight guaranteed years, close to $80 million, and two uh, club options, top father. So that'll be really 10 Ooh. years, assuming that he's going to be a freaking stud. And McAlvey, who covers the team uh, for MLB, said he can confirm John's report that the Brewers and Churio have settled on eight guaranteed, year guaranteed years. Two club options. That's the structure, and it'll be a re record setting structure because the highest before that was six years, 50 for Luis Robert. And the sides still need to finalize the money. And then Churio goes to Milwaukee for a physical. I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll be fine. He's 19 years old. He freaking flies all over the place. So I think, I think the physical is going to be like, uh, yeah, you look good. Go sign your contract, dude. Um, but anyway, this is by far the most that you're going to get before you're getting to the big leagues. This is a consensus number two prospect to Jackson Holiday for most prognosticators and scouts that are in the game. They're like, it's Holiday and it's Churio. These are dudes that I think most people that have seen them so far would be surprised if they're not at least multiple time all stars, if not superstars in the sport, pretty quickly too. If I'm if I'm Holiday watching this, I'm like, oh. Okay, I see where my potential could be here. And then I know his dad where well, his dad's probably, hey, man, don't worry about that just yet. But you go out there and dominate, you'll make triple that money. So um, interesting. It's a very interesting move as a prospect. It's a guy waiting. I mean, would you, you would say, do it. What? You would do it, right? Oh, my God. If they would have came to me. I, let me you I, have you know, nothing let, right let now. Me, let me be honest with you. I I'll, I'll tell you a true story. Okay. After my first year, we went to the to the Reds and we tried making a deal. It was like it was like I, I don't want to. I'm my teetering with the number, but it's it's close. It was like a five year, twenty five million dollar deal after my first year, and we almost we almost got it done. Something fell through. They they weren't willing to go the number we wanted. But I'm thinking like, oh my god, like even if I was to sign that deal, like I. I was actually losing money of my worth. You know what I mean? So it's like, what, what do you really want to do? So it's like the eight for 80, I would have, I would have said, where do I sign? You know what I mean? I, I yeah. would have done whatever, but there's, you know, those underlying facts, like I said before, underlying factors, what happens if I get injured? Um, you know, things happen in the off season. What happened? Uh, you know, Knock on wood, this never happens. And what my brother, it happened to my brother. He was lifting weight, pulled his labor in his shoulder. Like just lifting, like what happened? Something happened. He was never the same after that. So it's like, yeah, you take this deal, dude, and you run with it. You run with it. And this guy's not going to have to worry about money for the rest of his life. He's going to take care of his family and he's 19 and he's a prospect still. So does Scott, does this guarantee him? He's, he's playing center field next year. It should. On yeah, I, I, th I think so. Yeah, it should. I mean, and he, he should regardless, but it should. I mean, and he's barely played above double A. That, not that that really means much. He played like six games above double A, and he was yeah. in double A for most of last season. He was the youngest guy there, and it was already like, all right, I like what I see. The only thing – and he, he's, he's going to grow into the body still. Like, yeah. Holiday is a little more um, mature on that front in terms of strength. But Churio eventually is going to grow into, you know, 30-plus – home run power. And then uh, a lot of the scouts that I like to read say that the upside for Cheerio might even be higher than holiday. It's just those two getting compared. They're not even in the same, the same position, but it's just those two are looked at as like the next superstars of the sport. And they're so damn young, both of them, but Cheerio can make a huge impact for the brewers from day one. Potentially. We talked about this yesterday. I mean, it could be you know, a Cunha level 
for this team pretty close to the beginning of his career. So we'll see yeah. what happens. The other thing is, let's assume the options get picked up. This is the Brewers securing 10 years of a potential superstar at an average annual value of $10 million a year. And if he's anything like what most people think he's going to be, his value is going to be 30, 40, 50 million dollar player. So part of that yeah. has to do with how the system works in baseball. You're a league minimum guy. You're not even making a million dollars a year, right? So that'll get played out and kind of backloaded, which is how these contracts usually play out. But for them, they get to lock in a dude for a decade, right? That's your franchise player for a decade. And you don't worry about what's after that. And for Milwaukee, they have to operate a little differently for most teams. It's a smaller market. They can look and say, okay, even if he is the biggest superstar, we just got him for an absolute value. And he's 29 when he hits free agency, I believe, and still gets to cash out again if he looks like that, right? So it kind of works out for everyone. Um, we're going to transition yeah. right to our guest here, but uh, we'll get to Churio a little bit more as the news keeps coming out. Um, Mackenzie Gore joining us right now. AJ, back, doing his best. Mackenzie, you got us? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, you got Scotty Braun, Todd Frazier. Krasinski next See, all these little guys, go. man. Yeah, all these yeah. little guys. Look at this. They're Keep not little. Out, you just move a little closer to the the camera <laughs> slash computer. Our chair is nice. the same, really, look, same place. Great to have you on. Uh, we haven't had you on here before, but how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So hopefully hit hit it fairly straight today and see what happens. <laughs> AJ, you got any advice for him? Uh, just don't top the one on the first tee, like I told like we told uh, Wit, dude. Yeah. I, t I, I tell these guys like I play in a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. The first tee. I don't care how ready you think you are, first to your nerves. Yeah. I'm going to try to find the first one. I saw just that. Hit, you know what, it, what's one here is kind of a short part. Yeah. Just hit like, you get like a five iron, just yeah. get it out there. Yeah. Then you can relax. And then the first, like two foot putt, you're going to. Oh, shit. Yeah. Whoa, the hands sure. get a little shaky. The club, yeah. it gets a little wet. So. <laughs> hey, yeah, I would, I would give you it off the box. So. I'd give you advice. So I can't hit a driver right now. I would just take, if you got a two or three iron. Take it out there and just drive it about 220 right there, 230 yeah. right down. That probably right. is the smart move, but. No, grip it and rip it, bro. <laughs> Fucking grip it and rip it. I'm, I'm here to rip some drivers. Yeah. <laughs> you come here to lay up. Yeah, no. Nah. Oh, that would be me. Call me, yeah. call you Tin Cup. Call me uh, AJ. I'll just, I'll leave <laughs> up there. <laughs> Who know, you I got wish. with you? Who are you playing with? I'm um, playing with Will and I think it's Nate. Nate Lowe? Nate Lowe, yeah, pretty sure. Yep. The Lowe brothers. And Will Myers, are here. you're yeah. talking about. And Will Myers, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, Will's That's North Carolina guy, right? Yep. Yep. The Nate, so, and Nate's Atlanta. Atlanta guy. Yep. Okay. So right. you know them? Um, I know Will just from playing with him, but I don't know Nate that much. So, but they're good golfers. So. How does yeah. How does it feel How does it feel playing? You know, with a guy like John Smoltz, they're seeing him walking around there, a Hall of Famer, like. Is it, is it kind of surreal just seeing guys like that coming around? You're like, oh, hey, what's up, dude? Let's go, you know, have a drink at the bar or something. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, and we had, the, you know, drinks last night and dinner, so just him being kind of being around was awesome. Did you pick yeah, his yeah. brain at all? Yeah. Nah, yeah. I didn't buy Nah. No, come on. You got to go. Hey, Smoltz, how'd you hold your slider, man? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Smoltz, how you quit giving up homers? <laughs> He'll <laughs> have an answer for you, I yeah. promise you. yeah. He'll give you something. I don't yep. know if it might help you. You know, you're lefty, he's righty. It yeah, might be a little true. different, but I yeah. think he'll give you an answer. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm going to have to ask him that at some point this week. There you go. So we had your guy, Josiah Gray, on the yep. other day, and he was talking about you and you guys' potential and how you guys are, mm -hmm. you know, ready to kind of start making the move up back up the ladder. I yep. mean, what do you got on the Nats for next year? Yeah, man. I mean, the most important thing is we got to keep getting better. So if that doesn't happen, we're just not going to be very good. So, uh, you know, the, the off season's important. Um, but we got some, you know, CJ's fun to watch and he's going to continue to improve and, you know, Josiah and there's, you know, Lane Thomas had a hit 27 homers and, um, so and myself just need to get a little better. And, but we, we've got the pieces and we got some young guys, um, you know, that have a chance to help us next year. Uh, so we're excited. Uh, we've got an athletic group and, uh, sh should be fun to watch. Uh, do you see you see the Nationals diving into the free agent pool, trade pool? You guys think you, you you make a little run here trying to get some guys or no? I mean, you you know you always want to get better, so you hope so. Um, but I I don't know the answer to that question. So 
would would you like some would you like to have some more guys on there? Oh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah, no doubt. <laughs> oh yeah. How about how about like a guy like Shohei Otani? Would that be nice? <laughs> yeah, wouldn't we all like to have him? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You ever face you ever face Shohei one. or no? No, he um I pitched there last year, but it was a day game and I think right. he pitched the night before. So, oh, so he had that was his day off. He had Goritis that day. Yeah. He's like, nah, a lefty coming in and I think I'm gonna so, take that day off. That's smart. Uh, that was smart on his part. So. It was nice to not see him in the lineup. <laughs> You were so you were obviously a high pick, mm -hmm. huge, huge prospect yeah. coming up through the ranks. Then you had kind of a road bump, right? Mm -hmm. well, how explain to people out there how you get through that and now you get back to where you are, which is a you know above average, highly productive major yeah. league pitcher. So what was that like going from? Because I remember hearing your name forever. Yeah, like oh this guy's top ten prospect in baseball. Then you yeah. kind of hit a little bit of a bump, and then you went to Nats, and now you're kind of settled yeah. back in. Yeah, I mean, look, we're we're all going to struggle at some point. Um, it did get pretty ugly there for a little bit after COVID. Um, not sure why, but we just kind of, I had to figure it out and, you know, I was glad it happened because when I, you know, when I got called up in 22, I was ready. I was, um, as ready as I could have been and I had success early and I don't think I would have had that success if I didn't go through what I went through. So, um, so yeah, it's kind of one of those things you never, you all, everybody's always like, it's going to help you in the long run and it just... It's not fun while it's going on. So, are you happy? Okay, go ahead, Scott. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say, are you happy to to land with the Nats here now? I mean, Josiah was big on that. He's like, I don't know what my life would look like right now if I was at the Dodgers. He's like, yeah. I give a ton of credit to the development part of that. It's just, it's, it's a very different situation where you're with the Nats. You know, you've got a spot, right? They're trying to grow and develop you in the bigs and be part of like this next great. Nats team. And actually, you know, we can be pretty critical sometimes in this show. I like the way that the Nats are building themselves back up. The Soto deal was huge for them. So are you happy that you've landed here right now? Uh, yeah. I mean, look, whatever happens, happens. You go wherever, you know, kind of the wind blows. So here I am. Yeah, I'm in D.C. And it's, it's been fun. You know, like I said, we've got a good group of guys and we have fun, you know, playing together, which isn't always easy when you win 71 games. So the fact that we did that, I think, you know, we're kind of we're doing it like y'all said. We're doing it the right way, and you know, we add a couple more pieces, and it could get interesting. So, let, let me ask you this: So, the new rule changes—they're trying to speed up the clock even more for pitchers. Do you change anything in the off season? Uh, you know, to try and make sure your breathing's right. Your, you know, is there a lot more running, or you just keep going about your business? You're not really worried about you know the the 18 seconds now. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, yeah, I think we kind of. It was change, and you know how we make a big deal out of change sometimes. And but we all ended up getting used to it. And um, yeah, you, I guess you could maybe be in a little better shape if you need to. But um, I didn't really have a problem with it once I used it a few times. So, so, so who's your guy on the net? Is it? Is it? It's got to be Corbin, right? Uh, Corbin's my guy. Uh, we spend a lot of time together. Um, I mean, is he teaching you that back foot slider? Yeah, I keep trying. I'm trying. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Corbin's awesome. I mean, Josiah, CJ, you know, spend a lot of time with him. Um, but there's a lot of guys that we all hang out, and you know, there's a lot of team dinners on the road, which is you know, important and and fun. So, any are you excited? Yet? Okay. I try, but no. I you, you paid. I paid for one when Corbin wasn't there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was gonna say so, Corbin's got to be picking yeah, up yeah, the ball. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's got to throw yeah, down. He's on a one forty. He's yeah, got to so, be the guy. Um, we try, but. <laughs> hey, yeah. last last question for me before we let you go. How's that wallet? Is it a little light right now? You got a little side action going out there while you're golfing, or what? Are you uh, we had a little pocket? bit yesterday. We had a little bit yesterday, and we um, my handicap helped us win. So uh, right now it's okay, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Which said it is encouraged, and yes, keep in mind. I mean, yep. low. I don't think's gotten the big the big bucks yet, but Will Myers, you know. Oh, he yeah. can afford to shell a few out, so so go yeah. take him, man. Go you get tell him. Tell Will he still Will owes do. me money too. You tell Will Frazier. I'll, I'll let him. Frazier still needs his money. <laughs> I'll let him. I like it. Hey, right, Mackenzie, though. thanks for joining us, dude. Have a great game today, yeah. right? Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. It's, it's not it's not a game, by the way. You don't say have a great game today. So you have a nice round today, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see you uh, at some point. It's not a hey, game. I already, I'll be honest. I, I give him goals this morning. I give him respect, though. I give him respect. I like it. <laughs> I'm on I'm on low sleep right now, top. Hey, father. listen, I'm, I'm not even I'm mad like, at it. I respect yeah. it. I told you. Hey. You know when you know I when you like up. I think I did two hours. You know when you're 
I mean, hey, I, I've had too many uh, cocktails in life before, right? <laughs> this actually kind of feels worse. I feel like I'm less under control sometimes. Where yeah, you, I can see it in your eyes a little bit, man. They're yeah. A little, they're a little tightened up a little bit. Oh, there you go. You're back. I got to keep it like this. Yeah, my parents will definitely reach out to me. There's been like a few shows this year. They're like, you getting sleep? Oh, I'm God, like, that's uh, so funny. No, not, not this time, actually. Got, I got home a few hours ago. That's um, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, all good. Cool to have uh, Mackenzie Goran here for the first time. Um, as you know, we're continuing to mix in some of the golfers that are out there at Wits Pro Athlete Golf Tour. Um, Scotty, can I go back to the, the Cheerio signing real quick? I wanted to finish yeah. on that. I want to explain, like these Brewers fan. I hope they understand this is a great signing, and this is this could be like a really dominant signing for the Brewers and the Brass. But be patient with this guy, man. I know people coming up. He's supposed to be the you know the next. You know, Mike Trout. I'm not saying Mike Trout, but he's supposed to be one of the bigger names out there that's going to dominate the baseball world. Be patient with this kid. You know, he might not come up and hit the 30 home runs right away, or he might, and then he might hit a lull. This is baseball in a nutshell. The pitching is getting better. Just understand, you got a really good signing here for one of the best prospects in baseball. Bear with him. He's doing well right now. When you get to the big leagues, it's a different beast. He's going to do good. Just Bear with this young man. You know, there's going to be a lot more pressure since he's making this money. Just let him do what he does. So that's what I wanted to ask you a follow-up was when you went through your situation of trying to work out that early deal. And you can also make the case because like you said, I mean, you ended up, you know, going through it year by year, which if you do do that, it actually is most Hmm. of the time more lucrative as long as you stay healthy and on the field, right? So did you feel pressure, nervous? kind of craze during that time period, then it doesn't happen. And you, now you flip it. I'm curious, does, so Cheerio's going to get this done. He's going to be locked into a contract essentially for 10 years now. And of course, obviously you're still playing to the best of your ability every day, but is he going to feel more pressure? Cause in my mind, this is not like a, it's crazy, but it's not a massive contract in baseball no, considering who he is. So is he going to be like, Hey, if all else fails, in life right now, I'm on a guaranteed deal. As long as I keep myself, you know, obviously out of trouble, I'm going to make this money and I can just relax and have fun and be me. And when you see the guys that are naturals, right? You know how there's those guys always like a Miggy who who just rolls in there and, and he's not doing what everyone else is doing. And you yeah. ask guys questions like, how do you freaking do that? And he's like, oh, you just see the ball and hit the ball. It's like Griffey, right? So he's going to be able to just go out there, have a good time, talk to people, enjoy himself and not have to worry that year by year, okay, now I'm getting into ARB and and I got to perform so that, you know, if we're exchanging numbers, I'm going to be able to get to this number. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's all locked in now for a decade. You can, this can go one of two ways. It can be that way where he's happy, go lucky. The off season's great. Ah, you know what? I don't need to take that many swings. I feel good, which is fine. Listen, some guys, they do it overboard in the offseason, and they go out there and hit for a couple hours, which I think is crazy. But it could be this. Exciting. I'll, I get the offseason there. I roll into spring training. Happy as a clam. Go out there and just have fun. That can be it. Or it can go the other way. All right, now I made this money. I got to prove to myself what I'm doing. I need to be here. This hour, I need to do this. If I'm not working out here, what's on my mind? If I'm not doing well, I got to prove to everybody else what I'm doing. No. I hope he does it the first way and has fun and understands he deserves this money. He worked his butt off to get in this situation. He set himself up for life. He set his family up for life. And now guess what? You go out there and play the best game in the world, and you're basically playing the game for fun now because you're already guaranteed that money. Play the game how you used to play in high school and literally in college. or if he, I don't know if he went to college. Whatever it is. No, no. No, he I mean, he's 19. He's, he's, oh, you're right. He's a baby. I, uh, you're but right. Yes. I, I, you know, I got excited. So play it like you're growing up in, in your home play country. Play the game right? and have fun. Don't put pressure on yourself because the money's already made. That's, that's half the battle. Good for this yeah. man. Good for him. Yeah, it's great. And, and for the Brewers to be able to have a superstar or a potential superstar, right? Yeah. Tools that could be a big league player who's an, uh, a perennial all star. For a small market team like this, Brewers fans, you know, are sick of seeing certain guys go. They they shelled out the big bucks to keep Christian Yelich, and actually he bounced back pretty good this past season. But how many times have have they had to let big boys go? You know, yeah. Josh Hader trade crushed them a couple years ago 
when they made that move and felt like they had to. Corbin Burns is not going to be a brewer in 2025. He might be a brewer in 2024. That's part of the debate here still. But he is not going to be a brewer in 2025. I mean, he already has made that clear on this show that they didn't even, you know, they didn't make him a contract extension offer because they were like, we don't want to insult you. We know that you. he's going, he's going to get $200 million plus in free agency after this coming season, unless something crazy happens, right? He has been one of the most consistent, dominant pitchers in the sport year after year. They know they can't hang at that level. Yeah. Woodruff, too, who gets hurt now, he's going to move on. Like they are, They've done a great job of developing guys, and most of the time, they can't keep them forever. Now yeah. they get to have Jackson Cheerio for a long freaking time, and people are pumped about that in Milwaukee. So here's the last question in my mind on what Milwaukee's doing this offseason. Do you think that they should say, screw this, we won the division. I think it was 92 games. They won over 90 games. The division's trying to make moves, but they are the defending champs. Do they have to make sure they get returns right now? Like if you're the GM, put your GM hat on for Burns because this is his last year of free agency, <clears throat> uh, before free agency, Willie Adamas, same thing. Or... Do you see how the first few months go? And if they're looking around and going, oh, shit, we're in first place in the division again, then let the fan base enjoy playoff baseball, which is what their owner's been a big fan of. They do not like to tear it down and rebuild. They don't really do that, especially the modern brewers. And they've been in the playoffs, I think it's like five out of the last six years. So in my mind, the way that Milwaukee operates, I could see them not trading those guys, going into the year, seeing what happens. Worst case... They're six back, getting close to the deadline. Yep. Cubs and Cardinals bounce back. They're good, whatever. Then you can trade those guys and still get a pretty good return. Exactly, and I, I agree with you 100% because they do have the pieces right now, and they have a team that makes the, playoff, uh, makes the playoffs a lot now, and they, they are focused on that for sure. You got a new manager coming in in the Big Murph, and he is excited to take this team to another level. Um you got, you got some of the most dominant pitching in baseball. So why, why would you try getting rid of them would be my question to them. Let them focus on this and see how the season plays out, and you go from there. And that's that's what everybody's focus should be, unless you're a team that is in need of some something else. And I think right now, I think they're settled right now good. Also, I'm just thinking of like the personal beef that the owner, Mark Atanasio, clearly feels – for Craig Council, right? So Council leaves. And I, you know where I stand on this. I was all for it. I'm like, the Cubs offered him almost double if you do not just the average yeah, I mean, what annual value, but the years. Like, it's a no-brainer. He, yeah. he goes an extra 45, 50 minutes to work, and he's on a contract that's paying him 40 <laughs> mil instead of a contract that I think was going to end up in the low 20s. It's no contest for him nope. and for how he is setting the bar for future managers to kind of get that price back up if you're an elite manager in the sport or you're considered that way. But the owner did say like, you're leaving us, you're ditching us, whatever. They could have paid for him, okay? So in my mind though, clearly the owner took it personal. So if I'm the owner of of the Brewers and I don't usually rebuild in that way, they reload a little bit. I would keep these guys and say, hey, let's be competitive next year. We we got Churio, who knows? He could be an instant freaking rookie of the year star for us. Give us much more offense that, that we've needed over the past few years. He's like a Corbin Maybe Carroll kind improves. of guy. Yeah. Exactly. Imagine if he's a Corbin Carroll right from the jump, how much that Ooh. changes the complexion of the Brewers' offense. They didn't have Wood, if I mentioned this the other day, for most of last year anyway. So you'd still have Burns at the top. On a platform season, you know he's going to step up. He might be a Cy Young winner this year based on what he's putting together, right? Um, and he finished strong too. So their bullpen is still pretty tight and intact. They've got the best closer who just won the award the other day in Devin Williams. Wouldn't you, if you had a toy, want to still beat the Cubs when they just stole your manager? Like, th- this is a chance for them, just on a personal level, to be like, screw this. All this happened in our division, and we're still going to win it again, you know? Yeah. Like, there, there is personal involvement here of of an owner saying, hey, I don't want to be pushed around in our division. Yeah, I, I think you make a, a good point, but I, I don't think you 
you make that the ultimate goal because if you start bringing personal things into it, you take away from what you really want to do is win in a World Series. I want to dominate Craig Council. Wanna, yeah, you want to win your division. A hundred percent, Scott. I agree with you because then that'll lead to, you know, playing weaker teams and, and you know, helping them out win the World Series. But I don't think you want to make it personal just because a manager moved on. I mean, players do it all the time. Coaches do it all the time. You, you know, brass lets managers and coaches go all the time. It works both ways. So, you know, listen, you could have you could have paid more for the guy if you really wanted him. Don't you know? Don't blame it on him. The guy's just making a smart business move for you know himself and his family. Yep, yep, I'm with yep. you. All right, let's do a little uh, spreading rumors action while AJ's dancing around at the golf tournament <laughs> there, and probably going to bring us one more guest. Um, I'm going to save the Dylan Cease conversation. For AJ, the little update okay, that yeah, we got from John Morosi, because that's that's White Sox talk. We gotta yes, we gotta bring AJ into that. He's gonna be pissed if I bring that up and he's not sitting down for it. But <laughs> the other side of it, which we covered with our guys Kratz and Pruszynski, and obviously you're our Yanks guy too, doing your work at Yes. So here's Hector Gomez, who's also just referencing the Andy Martino tweet that we brought the other day. We brought up the other day. He's saying the Padres are said to be looking at top prospects and rookies like Jason Dominguez and Anthony Volpe, young major league pitchers like Michael King and Clark Schmidt, and more. And, and also, it was put out there that that's how this usually goes. You have the initial combo. Hey, we want Soto. What's it going to look like? Padres just shoot for the moon and throw out the biggest names there. Then you eventually start to settle on maybe the prospects that are um, not yet up in the big leagues who we started talking about yesterday. So what do you think of... The move for the Yankees, like, do you think this is badly needed for New York? You know, they they missed out on um, going after Bryce Harper in his free agency. This is another dude that came up right from the jump at, I think it was 19 years old, and he's been a star every year consistently, and he's going to be a free agent after this season. So how badly do you think the Yankees want to get a deal like this done? And what do you think it's going to take to bring in Soto for one year? Yeah, I... You know, just looking at the names here, you know, you think about, you know, what, what the Padres want. Are they going to want three out of these four guys? Like, no, gonna, that's way you, too much, dude. You know, no I, well, I mean, it's not way too, you know, how some of these meetings, I, from what I've heard over the years, like guys were, you know, from talking to some brass and stuff, they're like, these guys were shooting for the goddamn moon and back just to get somebody. And then they eventually came down. I mean, I could see a Michael King or Clark Smith going for sure. I yes. Mean, no, listen. But Dominguez and Volpe, I think no. that's the untouchable list. Yeah, I, I think right now those two guys are are pretty much set in stone, going to stay with the Yankees. But um, and me personally, I don't see, I don't mind one of them going. You know, for a guy like Juan Soto, a lefty that much needed that you need to come up and take New York by storm and not be a right-handed batter because they got guys that are right-handed that are dominate right now. Soto's unbelievable. You give up a guy like him and maybe another top top prospect down in the minor leagues again, and I think they'd have bode well for a year. I think that'll be just right. Listen, they need a bat like that. I know Bellinger's still out there too. That could be a backup plan, but that that's a guy, Soto, where the energy is unbelievable. His antics, New York will love every second about that, taking pitches, you know, looking at the pitcher, that kind of stuff. They need that kind of swagger a little bit back in the boogie down. And I think they better find a way to do this. But those two, Volpe and Dominguez, I think are untouchable, like you said. Yeah, I agree. I think it's two or three players, depending on what caliber we're looking at. So, for example, I do think, because right now, I mean, some places have Spencer Jones even ranked ahead of Jason Dominguez in terms of prospect rankings. I do think if the Padres want to replace him in that way, and Jones should be up if not somewhere later in 2024, at the latest in 2025, big dude, 6'6", 235, yep. left-handed hitting outfielder. You're actually, you know, if you're looking at the Yanks, you're like, you want to hold on to that guy? But if Soto <laughs> comes in and that's what it takes, could it be a, a Spencer Jones plus a Clark Schmidt? I actually think that deal gets it done. The other one that we brought up the other day, if it's three and you don't include Jones, was uh, Austin Wells, Clark Schmidt, and then you give them – a pitcher in the minor leagues like a Chase Hampton or a Drew Thorpe. So either way, yeah. those are good yeah. package offers by the Yanks in my mind that I think would probably get it done. 
for San Diego. I don't know what else is being offered out there. And trust me, there are plenty of other teams that are going to be putting in phone calls and seeing what they can put together. So I think there is some pressure for the Yanks to pull off the best offer. If they're not going to get Cody Bellinger, especially, you kind of run out of options, you know? No, I agree. I agree. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, the back and forth banter about, oh, we want this guy. No, he's untouchable. No, well, you could do this. Well, we don't want him. This is the part of baseball where I want to be a fly on the wall and I want to start getting into because you'll start, I'll start making enemies with people. Like, Yo, dude, I already told you this guy's untouchable. What's wrong with you? You know, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, but then you know what I do, Top Father? Because we talked about this a little bit yesterday too, but then I started looking into more teams and options for him. Like, the Cubs don't bring back Cody Bellinger. They're yeah. going to place a phone call and they're going to be like, what are the Yankees offering you? Okay. The Cubs farm system's gotten much better. They're like, let me uh-huh. put a few names together. You know, if the Cubs yeah. don't end up with Otani, with Bellinger, maybe this is the phone call they make and then they lock him or they, they throw a half a billion dollars at Juan yeah, Soto or at least know. they get to play out a season with him and try and say, hey, you want to stay here? Do you like life here? I think that's a possibility too. It's not like the Yanks are going to be the only team involved. Those conversations are starting, but it's something to keep in mind here. It's not like a lock for them. They're going to have to wow the Padres enough to pull this off. I do think the Yanks are probably anxious to try and get something done. And maybe they like quote overpay in their minds because they want to do this and not let it linger because eventually Todd father, we've talked about this all off season. There are too many teams that are big market teams that want and feel like they need to make a splash. Not all of them are going to do it right. The, the Mets are going to be involved with the player. That's big. Probably Yamamoto in my mind, the Yankees, the Giants, the Dodgers, the Cubs. Like these are these are the biggest market teams that all feel like they have to deliver at least one superstar this offseason. They're not all going to be able to accomplish what they want, most likely. I I I but I'm with you hundred percent on that. It's don't forget about the Mets now too, because you That's know, what they're I'm saying. Yeah. underlying factor. But yeah, I think they're gonna go hard after Yamamoto, dude. Oh, I think man. they're going I... really hard after Yamamoto because it fits into their game plan of saying, Hey, sure, we said that we were gonna be a little more chill heading into twenty twenty four, but this is a signing for twenty twenty four to twenty thirty two. Exactly. You know? It's he's a twenty five like, year old. Oops, <laughs> just another signing for me. That's what he's gonna say. So it's it's going to be interesting. I'm surprised there's not much more talk about him, you know, going to different places and the rumblings for Yamamoto. I don't know. Maybe it's the holiday season. Everything slows down. Oh, dude, I think people are popping off about Yamamoto right, right now. Go, Here, here's the reason why I think there's still time to spare. We have more transparency from his camp than we do from Otani's. Yeah. I mean, Otani could be on the moon right now. We wouldn't know about it, okay? <laughs> Yamamoto... Uh, this has been talked about by mul- multiple people that I trust enough, right? Um, has had his conference call, video, you know, Zoom kind of stuff, Google Meet going on um, from wherever he is with multiple teams. And then it sounds like he's going to do some in-person action right after the winter meetings. Nice. That sounds like Yamamoto is not going to sign until after the winter meetings All if right. he's going to do the in-person. Unless some team says, listen, we got to make a decision here. We're throwing you the bag. Take it or leave it over the next 48 hours. We really, really want him, other, but otherwise we got to move on to Jordan Montgomery. But otherwise, yeah. I do think that one could drag a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I think a lot of it's going to be dragged a little bit more. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we got Pierzynski coming back in a sec um, with Eric Gagne. He's going to join us in a minute coming up. So we'll save the Dylan Cease news. But just letting everyone know if you're uh, late to the party here, we are uh, also giving you guest access from the Pro Athlete Golf Tour, which is going on right now here in Orlando, Florida, um, right around the Ritz-Carlton. You got a number of big leaguers and former big leaguers that are teeing off throughout the day. Um, and, uh, by the way, what did I say? Have a great, have a great game. Later. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we're going to get, we're going to get a little more word from that golf tournament coming up. We'll talk to the guys, obviously about, uh, the current guys about big league life. Like we did with Mackenzie Gore, you know, we don't, we didn't get many Washington nationals players on this season compared to most other teams. And they kind of just completely flew under the radar. No one expected them to do anything, but it, it's been cool to talk to some Nats over the past week. Josiah For Gray sure. is super, super impressive to speak with. 
he was an all-star this past season for the Nationals. I mean, he was awesome. We had him out there in uh, in Las Vegas. So um, we're about to bring in AJ with Eric Gagne, who 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 brought him up before and said it was cool uh, to be able to spend some time with him. Oh, it was Wit. So Eric Gagne joining us right now from the uh, Pro Athlete Golf Tour. What do you got for us, AJ? Wait, I don't I don't hear you, AJ. Hold on, dude. <laughs> I don't hear you. You got to plug in the mic. Oh, your Wait, mic's muted. Right, I'm sorry. Muted. Do, you see what, those, what? do you see those guns, dude, Scott? Let me see those biceps. What do you got? Lot. There you go, right here, buddy. Look at that. Hey. Wow. Yeah. Time off. A lot of time off by myself, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Hey, great to have you on, dude. And and Wit was telling us, he was like, I never thought I'd be able to like hang out with Eric Gagne and got to spend some time with you last night. So how'd you find out about this and how's it going there? Uh, they call me probably, I would say, five, six months ago. And then uh, I'm a big, big golf fan. I love, you know, golf pretty much every day and just get the guys together. You know, we got the old veterans like me and uh, guys that are out of the game. Just kind of get that, get together with the new guys and everything else. Kind of cool just to, uh, you know, stay in the game a little bit. It's uh, it's pretty fun. Get, you know, great guys out here and just going to have to, you know, try to have fun and enjoy it. See where our game is. What did Wit talk to you about? Did he ask you anything? No, we didn't talk. We can't. We can't talk about it. <laughs> no, it, was that, it was that top was, secret. Oh, like uh, we can't talk. You know about where it. he's signing? You got you, You're going to announce where he's signing tomorrow. You got some free agents that are out there too. That are uh -huh. that are probably excited to be able to just play in this and take their mind off of checking their phone for an offer from their agent right now too. Yeah, that's real crazy. I mean, that's fun. That's a fun time of the year. I mean, I've been I was in a free agent a couple times, and it's uh, you know for them it's very nerve wracking. You don't know where you're going to go and. Uh, you know, I think for them just to get their mind off a little bit and uh, just enjoy, I think, just kind of meet the guys, see the guys a little bit off season, and uh, just have your guards down. Of course, at the you know when the uh, free agency market hits, it's a little difficult to relax, but I think it's uh, it's fun. It's a fun fun time because you don't become a free agent very often. And I think for them to enjoy it, it's pretty special. Let me ask you this question: What do you think about the new rules in baseball? Are you a fan of them? Well, I didn't like the clock. I think, you know, I'm, I don't mind speeding up the game. I think there's a way to do it. They've done it with the clock. I'd like to see it hidden a little bit. I like, you know, I trust the umpires more to kind of do it themselves. I understand they have to speed up, make it a little more fun. I don't understand the bags being bigger. I don't really get that part of it. But, uh, you know, it, it works so far. I mean, I was a little bit uh, critical at first. You know, everybody's a great second guesser. But uh, I think it's worked out well. I don't know if you want to speed it up a little bit. I'm not sure about the injury stuff. I've heard some stuff about injuries and pitchers and all that. But I believe, you know, I believe in the our, uh, the, you know, I believe in the game not changing too much. I understand you want to you want to use the data, you want to use the technology and everything else, but you don't want to feel for the you want to you don't want to lose the feel for the game. So, to me, there's a it's got to be a happy medium. You want to please your fans, but you want to make sure you don't lose the history of the game too much. So, wait, are you going to win this tournament? Oh, there's boy. some plus golfers. Here. I know. You're a plus a, handicap guy, right? Yeah. There's a yeah. I'm a plus one, but I don't know. I haven't played much. So okay. Hopefully, I mean, I mean you, you got Smoltz, who's got to be. I don't know if he's the favorite, but he probably should be, right? Yeah. I mean, if he's qualifying, you should be winning. So <laughs> exactly. pressure's on him. So exactly. <laughs> we'll yeah. see. All right. So I got to ask you two things. One, we we played. We never played with each other during the regular season. We played together in Japan, mm -hmm. and I've told this story on here about the Barry Bonds about we. Had, it was in 2004. Okay, and I remember you guys had a conversation because you had the long save streak going mm -hmm. and i remember going to dodger stadium and welcome to the jungle come on and it was like oh fuck the game's <laughs> over god damn it right and you had a conversation with bonds you said if i face you in a non where you can't tie the game with a home run i'm gonna throw you, i get one off speed mm -hmm. and i'm gonna throw you all fastballs and it was the greatest at bat i ever saw i was in the dugout and i knew what was going on no one else really knew and you threw him the one curveball yeah that, i cheated a little bit just a bit it was off a little bit yeah but it, you know, it was the a one time i was wasn't i actually wasn't supposed to throw a curveball i mean i wasn't supposed to change up so i threw the curveball and that was when I thought it was a strike. It was a little bit off. I mean, that guy would They're not ringing play. up Barry Bonds and San Francisco <laughs> ball this far off the plate, know, okay? Me. And, and if, for people out there who have never seen it, just Google Barry Bonds versus Eric Gagne at bat. And then he, then he throws him like seven fastballs that were like 99 to 100. And Barry's hitting him into the freaking cove. Uh -huh. yeah. And then about the sixth one, he hits it to dead center for a home run. Yeah, almost hit my face off. Alex Gore was a second base. Almost hit Alex Gore and then went out to center field. That was pretty <laughs> epic. I mean, that was probably the best time I've ever had on the baseball field. You know, I mean, you measure yourself. You know, I was on top of my game, and he was basically the god of baseball. So just to be out there, face these guys, and measure yourself against the best was pretty much the best time of my life. It was, I tell, you, I tell people, they were like, what's the best thing? you? And I'm like, the greatest about I've ever seen was Eric Gagne versus Barry Bond, both. That's guys. perfect. I didn't know you were there that day. I was, I in, I was on Japan. the Giants on the team. I remember yeah. in Japan we had that conversation, yeah. but I didn't know you were there. Yeah, the, the it was Giants. it was That's the cool. greatest thing ever. And then 
what was the streak like? Because I again I remember facing you, and I was like, oh fuck, like, here he comes, here comes the music. We're in Dodger Stadium, and and you know you're throwing the ninety nine mm-hmm. to one hundred, and you had the change of it, and you had that curveball. And the curveball for me was the separator because it would literally start like three yeah. feet over your head and just go. Ooh, it was like sixty seven <laughs> miles an hour. Mm-hmm. You're like, how the fuck am I supposed to cover all three of these pitches? Right, yeah. so that had to be like unbelievable. It was, awesome. it was amazing. I mean, first of all, it started you know probably a year and a half after I started closing, and then uh, it just start you know snowballing, just really, literally like confidence a little bit here and there. But the good thing it was really a safe situation. It wasn't really a personal record. It was for me to save the game for the team. So I really focused on that. But it was crazy. I mean, I got lucky four or five times. Sean Green threw out a couple guys one time in Montreal. I got bases loaded twice with no outs. I got double plays back at me, which I've never had before. So a lot of the things that happened had to go right. I had a great defense. So it was really cool because, you know, saves are, you know, I think it's a team stat. So for me, it was really, it was exciting. It was fun. I mean, I still pinch myself to go 84 in a row. It's two and a half. Oh, no. Oh, man. Look at him. Hey, as long as we get half of it in there, I think we're fine. We, we know. Now we know for next time we got five minutes or less so we got to get our questions in a little quicker that's all right stuff happens we behind the scenes of ft live we literally just book it right from vegas we get there we're like hopefully the internet's good it's it's good but then it takes a break and then it comes back so i want to i wanted to ask him if he if he wears the goggles when he when he plays you know what i mean the specs whatever those glasses remember the specs yeah, Chris, yeah. Chris he didn't wear him the whole thing. time. He wore him during – it wasn't his whole career, was it? Wasn't it – didn't either, it pop either up? Either way, like does he wear him just to putt? Does he wear him just for the – you never know, man. There's, There's no way he's or, wearing those anymore. He's, he's contact city right now. Hey, he looks totally different. I, w- I was like blown away. Like if I would see Felt. him on the street, I'd be like, I wouldn't know who he was. In a good way, though. In a good way. I'm like, he looks great. He does. He does. He looks yeah, he was great. big. He was big dude. Um, I think I hear them again. They'll be back in a sec. So, um, I mean, you're you're looking at, yeah, you're, you're talking about one of the most dominant relievers in the sport for a long period of time, you know? No, that would, that streak that he had, I remember I was younger. It was, it was unbelievable. Yeah. So, uh, we'll work on that for everyone here as we keep rolling along here. Scotty B and Todd Father present yeah, these hustling out there in Orlando. Um, all right, so let's go to these. Uh, uh, I mean, we'll we'll get AJ's take on this later, but let's go to the let's go back to spreading rumors. Yeah, these trade talks with Dylan Cease. If we're buying that, because apparently it's getting hotter right now. We got, a, we got action Marozzi. in the background. So if anybody's here in action, I'm, AJ's working. So just so everybody knows. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so hold on. Stand by. We're finding out if we're going back out there. Okay. We are going back out there. So I'm going to hold it again. I'm going to hold it again. So stand by here. <laughs> I told we've got Jackie hey, this Bradley is great. Jr. coming up in just a moment. Listen. Do you think Gagne is more nervous throwing as a as a closer? Is he more excited, I should say, as a closer or getting off that tee with – you know, I like asking those questions because the pressure situations, it's quiet. It's not loud. You know what I mean? Yeah, and also, I mean, if you're doing something for such a long period of time and you're, you know, the best in the world at it, I want to say it's easy for you, but you get you get into a rhythm. Right. Yeah, and then when you get on the tee box, you're like, "All right, now hitting Eric Gagne," and you're like, "Come on, crowd, let's go! I want to hear something." <laughs> oh. I'm with you. No, and it's going to be quieter. Like this is not a a heavy crowd yet for a tournament like this because it's the the first time they're doing it. So yeah. just keep that in mind. Um, I think we're just it. about good to go to bring in our last guest here from Wits Tournament. We got Jackie Bradley Jr. Did you play against JBJ? Oh yeah, oh yeah. JBJ was a beast, and every every time I played against him, it seemed like he's gonna hit an oppo off the wall or something. It was just 
and he, and he would run down every ball. So it's, it wasn't fair. That's what I'm fair. saying. You, you hit a freaking missile to center, and you're like, damn it, JBJ is out there. Yeah. Jack Bradley Jr. joining us right now from Wits Golf Tournament, the pro athlete golf tour with AJ. JBJ, how you doing, man? Good to see you. What's going on, fellas? How y'all doing? Good. We're doing well. So you ready to go? How you feeling today? Feeling good. It's warm down here. The body's feeling great. You yeah, so how'd, you find, how'd you find out about this, and how's your golf game? Um, Wit reached out to me. Um, me and Wit go way back. We went to college together. And um, golf game's a, a work in progress. You know, it's <laughs> something where I feel like I, I got it one day, and then it, then it leaves another. So we'll see how it goes. I, I just asked you. Now, now our producer Mark's telling me you just announced your retirement. Because I just <laughs> asked you when we were walking in. I'm like, are you going to play this year? And you're like, I don't know. And now I'm, you didn't even tell me you announced your retirement. I didn't. That's, huh. that's the thing. That's, <laughs> I, Way to I, go, I, Mark. I, 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 I didn't officially announce anything, um, but that's um, what's going around. Um, but nothing's nothing's official. Hey, we, at the I'm glad to say we played together way back. Yes, we did. 2014 yes, we did. Red Sox. Yeah. Yeah. He was the man. <laughs> no. I love playing with JBJ. He was great, uh, especially in center field when he'd run down them balls. Actually, you were playing right then, weren't you? Because Sizemore was in center. Yeah, Grady, so Grady right, played right? some center, yeah. And I, I played some some right. I played some left when um, Jacoby was in center. Uh, I, moved, I moved around quite a bit out there in outfield. So better feeling, better feeling for you. Robbing a homer or hitting a homer? Um, I think uh, let's go with robbing a homer just because, you know, you, the, the person who hits it is expecting it to be a homer and it's almost like you you take a bit of take a piece of them um with you when you when you bring it back you do that, that, that's not yeah. fair dude. <laughs> and, it, and a piece of me is gone and it's in your yeah. glove and that's, yeah. that's the worst part you get, like you take you take someone's heart that ball is the heart exactly and then, you know you got your guys that are like oh nice catch i was like i was one of those no. guys like this yeah okay I'm i got you bad. bro i got you that ain't cool man <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd be like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be the guy like, fuck you. <laughs> they go into bat, I'd be like, you son of a bitch. Now yeah. I'm trying to strike you out every time. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, man. You ready to I, rock I, the Go ahead. What's, what's no, up? go ahead, Top Father. No, are you are you like are you nervous? Are you excited to go? I I feel like this is a great opportunity. This is so such a fun opportunity for everybody, man. Who are you playing with? Like are you I'm, I'm excited with, to see uh, other James. guys? James Loney, Scott Barlow are on my team, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. This is obviously uncharted territory, and we're looking to hopefully push this thing to get more guys to, to come out and participate in this. Um, like anything, you know, anything else, we're all competitors at heart. So anytime you can get us to do something, compete, um, hang out with the fellas, I'm all for it. Yeah, so uh, while you guys were talking, I did Google. Like, there's there's people saying you're retiring. You're you're your own person. Do when you uh, see know, stuff out I there, mean, you're like, has, "Hello, has can it, I make my own damn announcements if I have did, to say did anybody did it? I don't think I've officially said anything uh, <laughs> to any news or media outlets, but I'm gonna let them sit there and run with it, and uh, we'll see what happens. Well, here, here you go. Here's your shot right now. No shot. No shot taken. No <laughs> shot taken. No, you know what he should do just to spite that? He should come back this year. I, I, I <laughs> he like should make sure he's dying. You know, I'm, I'm that type of person that would be like that, too. <laughs> you can still play. You can still go get him. Uh, oh, hey, yeah. there, there's other leagues, too. Man, you can go to Saudi Arabia right now. <laughs> hey, man, you, said it. you never know. <laughs> you could do Adam Jones, go to Japan for a year or two. Yeah, that's true, that's true. true, too. true. I, like, I don't know. I like, Mom, I like, I don't know I like, Mama be real happy with you going over know. to Japan for a while. I don't know. She she be coming too. <laughs> yeah, she she be over there like we're we all got about, three we're young all, kids. We're all about experiencing and experiencing different cultures and and things like that. So, and I'm sure we'll be excited whatever we may do. And he's got the little tykes, right? How what, what do you got at home right now? Um, three kids. Yeah. Um, oldest seven. Um, my middle middle son. He he turns three on this Sunday. And then I have an 18-month-old as well. We're in the Ooh. trenches right now. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. I, <laughs> yeah. I remember it's Jack and covering when, when you guys when you guys won with Boston. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you, I don't remember, you know, which of the three we're talking about here. My oldest. But She's, it she was, was your two. oldest, and and he was two. She was two. Yeah. Or she was two. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I remember because she was around. Like I was covering in the playoffs, and the guys yeah. were all like, "Oh, it's cool to just spend." You know, five minutes with the freaking cutest baby in the world right now before before I go out and feel nervous as hell. Yeah, no, it was it was exciting, good times. Um, 
and they'll actually they're going to come up here on on Friday and um, possibly take them to to Disney World on um, AJ's permission. Don't don't, don't do it, dude. Don't do not. <laughs> oh, do yes, it. yes. Don't, and, would, by I, the way, my favorite part of this is when people come to Orlando, they call me and they're like, "Hey, I'm coming to Disney World. Can you get me free tickets?" I'm like, it won't be free. They don't give I'm, nobody I'm, I'm, free tickets. No, they, they don't, don't give don't. Jesus Christ yeah. free tickets. They, they just don't. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Well, enjoy it, dude. Uh, Thank you. Appreciate it, fellas. Enjoy the round with everyone. AJ, you, you tell them because I can't say it right. I'm not a golfer. Yeah, have I a said good round. Good, I said have, have a, a, good a good game last time, yeah, and AJ's like game, never. Dude. That works, too. Whatever, it's, I'm not a golfer. Win that money, kid. Hey, yeah. bro, go crush Bring mama it. home yeah. that money now. That's right, baby. That's Let's right. Those side bets, too. Jackie, <laughs> great to see you, man. Appreciate it. Good to see y'all as well. I'll see y'all soon. Good luck. Okay, see you soon. Jackie Bradley Jr. with us on FT Live out in Orlando. Good stuff there. He knows. Cool. He, he, he's clutch. He's clutch. He's going to hit he those He is pots. clutch. Dude, that postseason with Boston, woo, when they beat Houston, remember that with, uh, what was it, the Benintendi catch in the ALCS? Yeah, I was he, on that he, series. He's, he's a beast, bro. And if <laughs> it's kind of sad, though, if, you know, if he didn't retire and everybody's saying, whoever's saying he did retire, that's it. You want to go on your own terms, but what are you going to do? It's out there. That's why I'm like, I, <laughs> I just want, if, if, if there's reports out there, if I was in someone like that shoes and they were like kind of on the fence about it, I'd be like, screw it. I'm going to make everyone sound super wrong right now. And just Actually, go, I just signed with this ball. and just make something up. Yeah. Right. I like it. Um, but anyway, all right. So let's get back to a uh, little spreading rumors action here now. Um, Trade talks for Dylan Cease have intensified over the last 48 hours per J.P. Morosi. The Braves are rumored to be among the finalists for Cease, who lives in Atlanta. If he's traded, where do you guys think he'll go? That was the Fox Sports wow. tweet that's referring to what J.P. put out there. So. Why, why wouldn't they be rumored? <laughs> your thoughts? <laughs> because we got into this, and I'm sure A.J. is going to hop back on in a few to give his thoughts. But Kratz the other day was like, if you're going to trade Cease, you might as well trade Luis Robert. And I was like, no, I'm sorry. Robert's got four years of control left at a very nice price for a dude who was a superstar this past season. He had a career year. He's freaking awesome. He's a five tool star. And when he's on the field, he's really freaking good. I'm like, you're telling me you're not going to be good for four or five years now. You know, mm -hmm. Steese is a little yeah. different. It's it's two years left. He's actually coming off a down year, but I mean, he is a stud. You look at 2022, he had like a low twos ERA. Um, his slider wasn't as effective this past season. It was a little sh more straight, like a little less bite off of it. Um, also keep in mind, he had a freaking terrible defense behind him. The White Sox defense was really bad. And I like outs above average. That's a stat that I like to use for defense. He had a negative eight outs above average behind him, which led to, you know, Babbitt, bat batting average on balls in play, yep. 330 Babbitt, which was Ooh. the highest for any qualified starting pitcher. Wow. So, you know, his stuff was, was a little less crisp than it was in 2022. The dudes behind him stunk, and he put up a four and a half ERA. So, I don't think that's who this guy is. I think this is a, you know, a three, maybe even a sub three ERA guy who's going to be one of the better pitchers in the sport for a while. So you better, you better be bringing back top, top prospects in a potential conversation like this. You better be trading him based off the 2022 numbers and not the 2023 numbers. Otherwise you keep him, you let him freaking dominate for half a season and teams still get him for two playoff runs, right? You still yeah. get him if you traded him at the deadline for that playoff run and the next year's playoff run. And I know teams were, were hot after him too. I think Baltimore was after him, Arizona was after him, and many other ball clubs during the trade deadline, and they didn't pull the trigger. So just curious to see how this ends up, if the White Sox definitely deal him and where they go from there, because it looks like they're just trying to switch things up with the roster. But are you – Totally rebuilding? Are you trying to compete? Where the hell are they at right now? I'm like not sure, but at the same time, I I think they rebuild. You know, Tim Anderson uh, is most likely 100% not coming back. Uh, you have this guy Dylan Cease. I mean, remember watching him 
the first game he he started, we're watching. He, he just was striking everybody. I think he was playing Houston, right? Do you remember that, Scott? Um, I don't know what it was. It was one of our first ever um, times we did foul territory, and he he was striking everybody out in the first game. We we're like, holy god, this guy's going to be one hell of a pitcher, and he still is. Oh, we were doing K props, and yes. <laughs> And he hit his K-prop in like three innings or something. Yeah, like in less than yeah. three innings. And he was like, holy cow. Anybody would be excited to get a guy like this. If you're the White Sox, once he goes, it's time. to. I, I would see Luis Robert going too. Why not? You know, teams do this all the time. They do, but I, then what, what are we doing? Get some... are, we, are we on a five-year plan then? That's what we always call yeah. it. All right, AJ, get, get in here too. Are we on a freaking five-year plan where the White Sox are just going to be like, all right, we're we're starting all over again. To me, there we talked about this the other day. There's a difference between Cease and Luis Robert, who's got many years left to go still on his contract. I, I hope not. As a White Sox fan, I hope they're not in a five year rebuild again because he just went through like a ten year rebuild. So I hope they don't. But listen, if you can get again, as as much as people think I've been critical of Chris Getz, I like what he did with the Aaron Bummer move. And whatever you can get for, for Dylan Cease, now is the time to strike. We talked about they should have traded him at the trade deadline, and teams would have got two and a half years of control. Now they get two full years of control. And the difference is, like you said, Scott, Luis Robert, I think, what do we look at, four more years at very, very reasonable yep. prices? So I, I, I think the time – you don't trade Luis Robert now because if you're trying to build, you need to have a centerpiece to build around, and that's Luis Robert. Cease, listen, if you can get four or five players that are – can help you down the road. I think you have to strike while the iron's hot because it is a weak market, as we've talked about many times, especially uh, for guys under control at a cheap price. Yeah, and you, you just you don't know where their mindset is too at the end of the day. But for to see the Braves have some interest, I mean, like I say, for why not? Why not the Braves? They're always in trying to get somebody. I think finding a way to get Dylan Cease. Oh my God, it just. Another unbelievable move for the brass and for this team. If that was to happen, I'm sure there's a long ways to go. But if, if talks are heating up here about getting them and the Braves are the top dog, I don't see why any baseball player would not want to go to the Atlanta Braves right now. Yeah, they want to go. But, I mean, how many teams are going to be going after Dylan Cease right now? Well, the Braves or Dodgers. Be on the line. Yeah. Dodgers better be on the line. Orioles Braves for me. Be on the line. Orioles. Yeah, Baltimore is – if there's a starting pitcher to acquire that's a top-end starter, right, besides Tyler Glass now because I don't think the Rays are going to trade within their division, Dylan Cease is who the Baltimore Orioles should be calling about, and they did call about him according to reports at this past trade deadline. And Baltimore can offer the best package in baseball right now between what they've got in the minors and a bunch of dudes that are rookies that – that just came up to the show. I guess you can make the case with Cincinnati too, but I mean, Baltimore has to land one of these top starters that are available. And there are not many of them, especially if Burns doesn't end up getting traded. Okay. So now let's go through the list. We've been going over like a top four, right? Think about this. If you're Baltimore right now, AJ, you're not getting glass now. Most likely Burns might not get dealt now for Milwaukee. I don't uh, Bieber right now coming off the season he had is not in the same weight class as these guys. And who are we down to if he's actually getting traded? Dylan Cease. So if Atlanta's in a conversation, cool, but Baltimore has way more in the cupboard in terms of young talent that they can offer up to make a deal. And Atlanta can spend money on a free agent starter. Like Atlanta can go in there and scoop up a Jordan Montgomery and pay him what he needs. Baltimore can't. They don't do that. So I think there is immense pressure on the Orioles to be on the line and say, hey, before you make a trade, let me know what your best offer is because I'm going to freaking beat it because we have to. Well, here's my thing. We said last year Baltimore should have made this move, right? At the trade they deadline, they went out and got Flaherty instead. They didn't want to give up their prospects for Dylan Cease. Well, Dylan Cease seemed like the perfect fit for them. Uh, is there? People always ask me about Dylan Cease. What, is there red flags with him? Is there reason why his strikeouts and his wins and his ERA went up a little bit? Well, for me, watching him every almost every start last year, and I had a conversation with him at the end of the year before about his last three starts about using his fastball more. He throws 98 miles an hour. Remember we talked about Gagne when he was on here throwing 98 miles an hour with the curveball and a changeup? Well, think about Dylan Cease. He throws 100 miles an hour as a starter 
with probably, I don't know if it is the best slider in baseball, but it's definitely one of the top five or six sliders in baseball. And, and we had a conversation. I sat down with him in the cage and he was, it was kind of during a rain delay and he was, he was kind of throwing off the bound in the cage. And I was like, you know, what are you thinking about when you pitch? And we kind of went through some situational stuff and he's like, man, you know, nobody's really kind of, I'm like, has anyone ever talked to you about this? Have you ever talked to hitters? And he's like, no. And I'm like, you know, cause he was talking about like spin rates and, 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 and things with the slider and, and I'm like, you know, his release angle and all this stuff. And I'm like, dude, how about we talk about how you set guys up, right? Like how you're setting guys up to get to your slider. And he's like, man, this is kind of different stuff than what we talk about. And I'm like, yeah, let's, cause I'm like, I go to Dylan. He says, listen, if I'm a hitter off you and Frazier, I think you'd say the same thing. You're looking for a slider. Cause at some point you're getting a slider, right? So you have to be able to set that up with either heat or in. He doesn't pitch in at all, hardly to right handed hitters, especially. Right. So if you're, if I'm facing Todd Frazier, I know I got to throw him something in at some point to get him off the slider. As good of a fastball hitter as Todd was, eventually he's going to sit on a slider. And I'm like, Dylan, at some point, dude, you got to throw a fastball into a righty and a lefty. He's like, I do. And I go, yeah, how often? He goes, I don't know, maybe one a game. And I'm like, dude, we got to get more out of you from that. And he thought about it. And then I think, and I'm not saying it's because of what the conversation I had, but his last, I think, three or four starts, he got back to almost the old Dylan Sousa strikeouts because you got to get guys off your slider. Am I wrong, Todd? No, 100%. And unfortunately for me, it didn't, if you threw me a slider, I knew it was coming. I still couldn't hit it. I'm like a 150 <laughs> hitter against a slider. But, yeah, like eventually the good hitters are going to be like, you know what? I'm not worried about the fastball anymore. I'm going to sit slow, and I'm going to get two of them, maybe three of them, this at bat. And that one time where it's not biting as much, I'm going to get my knock. So, yeah, if you're not working the in, inside part of the zone on every batter, lefty or righty, you're going to have a tough time. And guess what? I'm going to dive over the plate if you're not going to, if you're not going to force me to back off the plate. And as a catcher, it's got to be frustrating, too, <laughs> if you're not calling it in because everything, they're diving over. All right, now i got a guy set up, and we're not going inside. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, and we'll continue to monitor the market there. But the one other thing I, I'll say – in terms of Baltimore feeling the heat, I mean, Cease is making eight and a half mil. Like that is right in their wheelhouse, or he—he he, that's what he's supposed to make. That's nothing for Arb, right? I mean, there's other dudes out there that that are making much more. I mean, again, they're not getting glass now, but he's gonna make twenty-five. Carver Burns is gonna make what twenty? He is probably in that range. I can tell you what his projected Arb number is if you give me four seconds. Let's see. His One projected uh, Arb two, number for twenty twenty-four. Or you're out. <laughs> All right, then never mind. I'm not going to tell it to you. Uh, 15 ish. 15 ish. For that, seems low. that seems light for him. It seems light for him. Cy Young in his back pocket, playoff appearances, great years every year after year. Maybe they're, maybe they're weighing the fact that he's going up against the most fierce, brutal arbitration group with Milwaukee. <laughs> he helped them make the playoffs this year, but they didn't win a game. That was his fault. Right, right. Every they just come up with the most ridiculous shit. So, all right, let's slap. All right. So, first off, uh, breaking news: we are going to be doing a kind of normal show on friday where we're just in our home studios so look out for that we've been all over the damn place some people will get some rest too um but also want to throw this out there um as we give you our betmgm bonus code to use foul 200 it's coming to a close that one so if you haven't signed up there's other obviously promo codes that we'll mix in there but if you want the bet 10 get 200 i think it's coming to a close soon so keep that in mind if you place your first BetMGM sportsbook wager um, through the app of at least 10 bucks, you get $200 instantly in additional winnings, regardless of your wager's outcome. So keep that in mind. You get those, uh, once you place that qualifying bet, you get $200 in bonus bets. Gambling problem or concern, call 1 800 Gambler. All right, good stuff out there. AJ, are you jump, jumping into the tournament? Dude, I'm so damn tired. First of all, red eye from Vegas. Second of all, I mean, no, these dudes are good, man. Plus, Handy, yeah, I don't understand how good like John Smoltz is at golf. Like, I played with Loesch, I played with Punto, I played with a lot of these, I played with Gagne before. Like, these dudes, and I've heard Clippard is legit too. So, like, there's some legitimate – now, they're not professional level, like PGA Tour level, but to be a plus golfer, 
you are so good. It's crazy. And it, I, I wish I wish I had time this weekend to come out and actually watch. Forget watching. I wish I had time to come out and heckle the shit out of these dudes. You know, <laughs> some of the, you know, especially like a lot of these guys I played with. So it'd be fun to just sit there and just give them shit. And uh, like uh, Kyle Loesch, I was talking to Kyle Loesch and Punto out on the range. And they're like, you know, I was like, they're like, how's the podcast going? I go, it's great. You know, these guys are awesome. We work with everyone. They're like, and they both look at me and go, if there was ever a perfect thing for you to do after you retired, they're like, you were great at talking shit. They're like, so that you just, you went right from catching to talking shit. They're like, it's perfect. Yes. This is, this is the talking shit podcast, which will feature Stephen Vogt, AJ Hinch and Kenny Ballgame Rosenthal back with us on Friday and then stay tuned. We'll keep everyone posted on what we're doing. Obviously we'll have our regular shows, but we'll, uh, we'll definitely cover some crazy winter meetings action or we hope so. Cause there's, uh, what 37 out of the top 40 still unsigned. <laughs> some people have said it's a slow off season. I feel like we're busy every day, but, uh, AJ get some rest, dude. We'll see you back Monday. Uh-huh. Yeah, up, oh, perfect. We lost them at perfect time. <laughs> and Todd Father, we'll see you on Friday show, all right, dude? I'll see you tomorrow, bro. All right, sounds good. See everyone tomorrow for Vote Hinge.